Greetings, YouTube leftists. Due to the copious amount of notes in this video, the copious amount of references, so as to avoid supererogatory quantities of sidebar mustaches, I'm just gonna say, look at all the links in the sidebar. Oh yeah. In order to accurately analyze the war on drugs, we must consider what the proper role of government is. Now, there are several theories on the role of government, one of which was expounded upon in Bastia's The Law, a somewhat radically libertarian publication. He stated, who will dare to say that force has been given to us, not to defend our rights, but to destroy the equal rights of our brothers? And if this is not true of the use of force by each individual acting separately, how can it be true of the collective force, which is nothing but the organized union of the separate forces? Hence, if anything is self-evident, it is this. Law is the organization of the natural rights to legitimate self-defense. It is the substitution of collective force for individual forces, to act in the sphere in which they have the right to act, to do what they have the right to do, to guarantee the security of person, liberty, and property rights, to cause justice to reign over all. Now, obviously, under Bastia's radically libertarian, natural rights-based theory of government, the war on drugs is completely illegitimate. There is no violation of anyone's rights caused by someone electing to consume narcotics or any other form of mind-altering substance. It may be bad for them, it may even have adverse societal effects overall, but this is not a violation of anyone's rights, and hence, under Bastia's theory of government, it is completely illegitimate to use coercion to stop it, as our government has done. Now, to take a less radical but still classically liberal position, we can use the utilitarianism of John Stuart Mill, expounded upon in On Liberty. He stated that the only purpose for which power can be rightfully exercised over any member of a civilized community against his will is to prevent harm to others. His own good, either physical or moral, is not sufficient warrant. So, when people argue based on the harmful effects of drugs upon the body that the war on drugs is justified, they are still unjustified. Some drugs may induce behavior that is significantly harmful to others that it is justifiable to ban it. So it is reasonable to, say, prohibit driving well under the influence of a substance. It is obviously, however, not reasonable to illegalize marijuana. Now, the one rational theory of political thought which could conceivably have the war on drugs as we know it as an option is one that is a purely consequentialist or utilitarian theory. Under such a theory of government, the purpose of government is not to defend freedom. There's no explicit limit. The goal of government is simply to produce the optimal society, a society that maximizes human happiness and human potential. However, as I will demonstrate later in this video, the current war on drugs uh, does the opposite of this. However, let us consider also that, at least according to Noam Chomsky, the burden of proof is not upon me to show that the war on drugs is illegitimate. The burden of proof is upon those who are engaged in authoritarian power structures to prevent others from using drugs. The usage of coercion is what requires justification, not the request for coercion to be removed. Noam Chomsky defines his own anarchist philosophy as a tendency in the theory, in the history of human thought and action which seeks to identify coercive, authoritarian, and hierarchic structures of all kinds and to challenge their legitimacy, and if they cannot justify their legitimacy, which is quite commonly the case, to work to undermine them and expand the scope of freedom. So, the I am challenging the legitimacy of the war on drugs. Proponents of the war on drugs will need to demonstrate to me the legitimacy of their hierarchic structures that they have created through the state. If they fail to do so, it is our duty 
as leftists, as liberals, as libertarians, as lovers of freedom, to dismantle the hierarchic structures. Now, the initial justifications for the war on drugs were multifaceted, one of which was the compromise with the puritanical noob cakes or religious zealots who were disappointed by the end of prohibition. They decided to have their own prohibition passed, a new prohibition to compensate for the loss of the old restrictive policies. Then another justification for the war on drugs was the corporate greed of the likes of DuPont. They did not want the highly useful plant of hemp to be utilized for all its full commercial potential because that would compete with their products on the market. It turns out that hemp, at least according to Jello Biafra's excellent talk, Grow More Pot, is an extraordinarily versatile material and would be much more renewable than what we currently utilize. But the war on drugs engages in a sort of market plunder, a plunder that prevents us from using it to its full potential. Stupid laws. Anyway, another justification that wasn't really a justification given for the war on drugs, but rather a justification used to dissuade the public or to persuade the public to manufacture consent was racism. It was said, for instance, by Henry J. Anslinger, who spearheaded the early war on drugs propaganda, that marijuana, or as he put it, reefer, made darkies think they were as good as white men. Well, ignoring the fact that they are, we'll say that that's an interesting propaganda method to get the rednecks on your side. Now, furthermore, it has been speculated and shown through a historical analysis by Noam Chomsky that drug prohibition tends to occur when drugs become class localized mainly because the ruling classes, at least according to Chomsky, don't wish to see the classes they deem dangerous become even more reckless, even more radical than they already are, which drugs can tend to provoke reckless behavior, at least according to the dangerous class, to the upper classes. It's among the dangerous classes that the dangerous behavior occurs.